In this video, we are going to learn how Newton's laws of motion can be used in non-inertial reference frames and what are pseudo forces. You are aware that Newton's laws are valid only in inertial reference frames. What are inertial reference frames? Frames that are either at rest or move with a constant velocity are called inertial reference frames. In other words, inertial frames have zero acceleration. You are also aware that Newton's laws are not valid in non-inertial reference frames. That is the reference frames that are accelerating. So, what is the physical meaning of these two statements? So, let us understand using a simple example. So, here in this diagram we have two observers observer A standing on ground and observer B standing on a truck which is moving to the right with an acceleration A. So, a reference frame attached to the observer A or the ground is an inertial reference frame because earth is considered to be a good inertial reference frame for all practical purposes. We ignore its its spinning motion about its own axis and its orbital motion about the sun and the acceleration arising out of these two motions is ignored and earth is considered to be a good inertial reference frame. So, let us say the reference frame attached to the ground is this the reference frame attached to B or the truck is a non inertial one because it is accelerating. Let us say we attach this reference frame x and y to the truck and therefore, this reference frame would be non inertial reference frame because it is accelerating to the right with an acceleration A. Now, both these observers A and B they are interested in studying motion of a particle p which is moving in two dimensional space and suppose there are several forces acting upon this particle p and the resultant of all these forces is a force f acting in this direction. So, observer a can say that acceleration of particle p with respect to this inertial reference frame is A equal to F upon M the mass of the particle P. This is nothing but the Newton's second law of motion F is equal to MA and therefore, acceleration is the net force upon the mass of the particle, but observer B is in non inertial reference frame and therefore, he cannot say that acceleration of particle p with respect to this accelerating reference frame is equal to f upon m because Newton's law is not valid in this reference frame. So, the equation f is equal to m a cannot be used when working in a non inertial reference frame such as this one. Nevertheless, we want to explore if by little tweaking the equation f is equal to m a, we can use it in non inertial reference frames also. So, let us examine this aspect in little detail. So, let us consider two reference frames, one named s is an inertial reference frame which is fixed to the ground, the other frame called t is non inertial one because it is moving at an acceleration of a 0 with respect to the fixed inertial frame. We also have a particle p which is moving in this two dimensional space and from our knowledge of relative motion, we can say that acceleration a of particle p with respect to s is equal to acceleration of p with respect to t 
plus acceleration of t with respect to the inertial frame s. Rearranging the term, we get acceleration of p with respect to frame t is equal to acceleration of p with respect to s minus acceleration of t with respect to s. And we know that acceleration of the frame t with respect to s is a0. So, we write acceleration a of p with respect to s minus a0. Now, we multiply the entire equation by m so that we get m times acceleration p with respect to t equal to m times a p with respect to s minus m a0. Now, this term m times acceleration a of p with respect to s is equal to the resultant force f acting on the particle. So, we can say that this term is equal to f minus m times a naught is equal to m acceleration of p with respect to t. Now, dividing the entire equation by m, we get acceleration of particle p with respect to t is equal to f minus m times a0 whole divided by m. So, as per this equation, acceleration of the particle p with respect to this non-inertial frame t is equal to the resultant force f acting on the particle minus this term m a 0 whole divided by m. Compare this equation with acceleration equal to f upon m which is the Newton's second law and you find that these two are identical except for the term m times a 0. So, suppose we consider this term as an imaginary force or a pseudo force that is minus m a 0 is an imaginary force or as a pseudo force. Then we get acceleration of the particle in non-inertial frame is equal to sum of all the real forces F and the pseudo force whole divided by the mass of the particle. And this gives us a alternate version of the Newton's second law for working in the non-inertial frame. So, what is the conclusion of this exercise? The conclusion is that when we have to work in a non-inertial frame and we draw up a list of all the forces, we should not only include the real forces acting on the particle, but also include an imaginary force. As you notice, the magnitude of this imaginary force is mass m times a0 and its direction is opposite to that of a0. So, let us see how this works in real life situation. In this problem, we have a small block which is of mass m and it slides down a smooth inclined plane. The inclined plane is fixed in an elevator which is going up with an acceleration a0. The base of the incline is of length l and we have to find the time the block takes to reach from this position to the bottom of the incline. So, if we work from a fixed reference frame attached to the ground, we will find the motion of the block quite complicated. But if we work from the reference frame attached to the elevator, we will find that 
the motion of block is fairly simple. It is in a straight line along the incline. But when we work from a reference frame which is attached to the elevator, we'll have to remember to include a pseudo force of magnitude m times a0. This is the free body diagram of the block. The gravity force mg is acting downwards. The reaction force n is normal to the plane. These two are the real forces and the third force is the pseudo force which is m times a0 and its direction is downwards because the acceleration of the reference frame is in upward direction. So, these are all the forces acting on the block in which there are two real forces and one force is the pseudo force. If we consider that the acceleration of this block is a along the incline, then we can say that m times a is equal to the sum of the components of these two forces along the incline. So, this would be equal to m times g sin theta plus m times a 0 sin theta. Simplifying this equation, we shall get a is equal to g plus a 0 sin theta. And this acceleration is the acceleration as perceived in the reference frame, which is moving up with an acceleration a 0. Now, the motion is with a constant acceleration and therefore, we can say that the distance covered, the distance covered is L upon cos theta. So, the distance covered is half a t square that is half acceleration times t square. This is so because the block starts with an initial velocity of 0. Now, we plug in the value of a from this equation into this equation and we get this is equal to half times g plus a 0 sin theta t square and therefore, t would be equal to 2L upon g plus a 0 sin theta cos theta so the time taken by the block to reach the bottom would be equal to under root of this expression this term and that's our answer so thanks for watching